after defining strain, after showing that strain is a tensor. The meaning of tensor is that it is now a physical quantity which has information about the system. It has information about the deformations in the system and it will have different components in one coordinate system than relative to the other, but it will have a fixed mechanical and physical interpretation. That is the added value of having a tensor. Okay, now the interpretation is that the strain tensor now can also be transformed in eigensystem. We can calculate principal strain, principal directions, eigen strains, eigen directions, eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Now, before in section three, we did it for stress. Now we do it for strain. And this one I can do very quickly because it's just repeating everything which we did already. It's actually the identical slides. The only things which I changed is I changed sigma to epsilon. Okay, you remember the determinant of this matrix. If this determinant is zero, then we can solve it. This results in the characteristic equation. Here are the invariants of the characteristic equation. And the invariants, we don't call them I1, I2, I3 anymore. We call them E1, E2, E3 for the epsilon of strain. Now, having those, they are exactly defined as the invariants of stress. Only the symbols are different. E and I, epsilon versus sigma. Okay, all everything else is the same, nothing new here. The physical interpretation will be different and that one I, I show you later. You can already guess what it is. Now, this was 4.4. I immediately continue with 4.5 because this is the interpretation of the first invariant. The first invariant of strain is called the volumetric strain. It is that what happens when you have change of volume by changing the delta L1, delta L2, delta L3 the same way. No, actually not the same way, <laughs> by changing delta L1, delta L2 and delta L3. Okay, the change of length delta L1 is described by delta L1 original times 1 plus change of length. Epsilon 1 or epsilon 1, 1 are the changes of length. Epsilon 2, epsilon 3. In this coordinate system. Now, taking that picture, instead of changing, uh, instead of calculating the length and the change of length, we can calculate the volume in the original position. We can the calculate the deformed volume. And the deformed volume is the product of the lengths. Okay, so in the original case, it's just the three delta Ls. And the new definition is the three delta Ls multiplied with the one plus epsilon one, multiplied with one plus epsilon two, multiplied with one plus epsilon three. Okay, so this is change uh, volume, original, new. The volumetric strain is then the definition of change of volume. V prime minus V is the change of volume divided by V, which is the original volume. So it's a similar definition as the strain itself, change of length. But now volumetric means we talk about volume and not length only. OK, so since we divide out V, we divide out all the delta Ls. They are going and what remains is one plus strain one plus strain, one plus strain in the three directions. And from the minus V comes a minus one. Okay, so if you multiply all this out, then you will get a one, minus one cancels it. Then the next terms will contain the epsilon one, the epsilon two, the epsilon three. Okay, and you will have higher order terms like epsilon one square, like epsilon one, epsilon two. And those we ignore again because we assume that epsilon, the strains are small, small strain. OK, so this is the approximation for the volumetric strain to first order. Now, if you go to higher order, then you would involve also the higher invariants, for example, the third one. We ignore those. OK, and then we have the volumetric strain equal to the first invariant of strain 
equal to the sum of the diagonal elements. And here we have the eigenvalues actually equal to the diagonal elements in an arbitrary orientation. So epsilon one, epsilon one, one are not the same. Epsilon one, epsilon two, epsilon three has the meaning of eigenvalues. Epsilon one, one, epsilon two, epsilon three, three are the normal strains in an arbitrary orientation. Like for stress, we had the same definition for stress. First invariant of stress was the sum of the eigenvalues was the sum of the diagonal elements. Now, the first invariant of strain is not the hydrostatic stress. That's evident. The first invariant of stress was the hydrostatic or mean stress. If you be divided by three, the first invariant of strain is directly meaning the volume change. OK, now in index notation, epsilon V is also often abbreviated as epsilon KK, where the summation over KK is implied here. OK, so this is the meaning of the first invariant of strain. And the meaning of the first invariant of strain is related to the first invariant of stress, because if you apply a hydrostatic stress, it will change the volume. If you if apply a stress, it will change the volume. If you change the volume, that will lead to a stress. And the first invariants are always corresponding to the direction independent changes of stress or volume. Volume has no direction, so it's a scalar quantity. First invariant is related to the scalar strain, change of volume, and to the scalar stress, change of hydrostatic stress. Uh, not change of, <laughs> to the hydrostatic stress. Okay, now almost done. This is the last slide for with new material for today. The engineering strain, as I defined it, is complemented by a true strain and stress. And you have to be aware of this difference in definition. So the simple definition I used was just change of length divided by original length. Stress was force divided by area. That's something completely different. OK, now, if these objects would be constant during deformation, OK, then we could do something with it, but we cannot assume this. So during a deformation, the strain might not be constant. And that means the strain increment at one time or at a later time, they will be different. So in order to calculate the strain, you have to integrate over the inc increments. And that one is then giving you the true strain. At the time t, at the given size of sample and the size of the sample definitely does change during the deformation. This is why the strain increment is changing during deformation in general. OK, true stress is also depending on the force at time t and the area at time t and the area and the force. Maybe the force doesn't change if you apply this as a boundary condition, but the area will change. OK, so you have a momentary cross section. You have a momentary force. We have a momentary length. Take a look at the movie about the ten uni actual tensile test, which I placed on canvas. That is then setting the relation to the real experimental reality. When you do a tensile test, the object cross section, the object length, and the, typically also the forces on the object and definitely the stresses on the object change during time while you are doing the experiment. And this is the reason why the engineering definition is only true for very small deformations is only identical to the true strain for very small deformations. And this is why the true strain is the better quantity to work with. Most of the time we don't need it for our for this course, but in future, true strain is a better quantity. I, <laughs> I can tell you. OK, now when you do the integral, uh, you will get something like a logarithm of the change of length. So the logarithm of L of time T divided by original L, the logarithm here is the meaning of the true strain. True strain and engineering strain are related by logarithm one plus epsilon. Epsilon is the engineering strain, epsilon T is the true strain. Okay, so th now this was the last word I have to say about strain, true strain in particular. And most of the time you will not need it in the XM the only thing what you need for the exam is to know that there is a difference between strain and true strain. We will not ask you to do a lot of calculations. 
which use this information. OK, so that's the end of the section. For about strain, it was a lot of repetition of mathematics. So I was going rather quickly through the eigenvalue calculation because that's exactly the same for strain or stress. Um, the symbols are different. The interpretation is different, and that is what the important thing to keep in mind. Now, tomorrow, not tomorrow, <laughs> surely not tomorrow, uh, next week, I will continue with material behavior. And that is then the concluding the linear elasticity because it's bringing section three stress together with section four strain. So material behavior is about stress strain relations, as you have seen already in some courses. This is uni actual tension test strain stress modulus. And modulus is a material property. We didn't have that so far. We only were talking about stress alone, strain alone. Next week, we bring together stress, strain. Okay, end of lecture.